Hey, everybody, this is Alan Fine. I'm here with Wolfgang Gartner, who is the head of international marketing for Saxony Tourism. If you've been watching us, you know we've done four videos already. This is a part two on Meissen. Uh, we talked about the factory. Now we're going to talk about the town. And this is Insider Travel Report. Wolfgang, I had the greatest train ride from Dresden. It was short. The trains are great. And this nice little um, uh, uh, station greeted me. And the first thing I saw was the town. And I was charmed already. Yes, Meissen is the oldest town of Saxony. It was already founded in the 10th century. And uh, it was uh, never really destroyed. So it has all the old town charm. And even though you're here only in the 19th, 19th century expansion of the town, it's still charming and looks historic. So I walked, but, my, my entire day was by foot. I walked to the Meissen factory and then I walked to the palace and the church. And this is the beginning of that. That is very easy because uh, Meissen is on the commuter train line from Dresden. And the last stop on the line is Meissen Triebestal. And that's basically the stop of the Meissen porcelain manufactory. Uh, so you, you didn't have much to walk to reach the manufactory. It was already approaching the entrance. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are very tempted and uh, to uh, stay at the porcelain manufactory because it's like a world of its own and offers a lot of experiences. And uh, you could spend hours there or the whole day if you wanted to. But I'm glad that you uh, also said, I want to see the town that gave the porcelain its name. Exactly. Uh, and so after a fun day there, uh, learning about uh, the manufacturing and even having lunch on porcelain made by the, the factory, I was then able to uh, start walking again. And I and so I made my way slowly into the town and then began my climb up to the stronghold, I guess, even though it really wasn't that kind of castle. Well, uh, the Castle Hill, of course, dominates uh, Meissen and it's up on a hill, so you have to climb up. But uh, you, there's different alternatives how you can get up there and everything is very scenic and it offers nice views. Like here, you just saw the uh, Frauenkirche, the Church of Our Lady. So not only Dresden has a Frauenkirche, Meissen has one too. And this one is special because it has the oldest Glockenspiel or Carillion made with Meissen porcelain bells. So as I'm climbing, I, I then see this. I saw the spires and then I, I definitely felt transported back in time. Yes. And here you, you've reached a very special place because this is a part of the town known as Freiheit, which means freedom, because uh, Meissen was for centuries, the capital of Saxony, it was actually even the capital of a region called Meissen before we uh, got known as Saxony. So uh, that's where the rulers were on the castle hill. And that's why the nobility wanted to live close to them. Uh, and uh, so they built themselves little palaces in this area, which was not under the jurisdiction of the town. Yeah, and here you can already see the gate into uh, the castle hill. Uh, uh, place and uh, uh, here's a map of Meissen and you can see very well that Meissen is located on three rivers. On the right side you see the mighty Elbe River then you see a smaller one at the bottom that's the Triebisch, that's where the porcelain manufactory is, on the Triebisch and yeah, I wish I could say uh, in the north you see a little creek uh, it's so small that you don't even see it and that creek is called the Miser. And surprisingly, this little creek gave the town its name. I walked through the, an arch and I was hit by this impressive sight. Yes, it's quite impressive. I mean, the Castle Hill doesn't uh, doesn't have a, just a castle like in most Castle Hills. It has a large number of buildings, as you can see here, which kind of represent the different functions that uh, were here assembled on this Castle Hill. And the dominant buildings are the one in the center, which is uh, Meissen Cathedral, which we're going to see later. You see the former main entrance in the middle of the building. Uh, which is not used anymore, and I explain later why. And to the left of it, the white building, that is the Albrechtsburg Meissen. 
And that's a very special building because it's the oldest palace of Germany. In Germany, we have Burg and Schloss and Burg denotes a fortified castle, while Schloss means palace, like in the Palace of Versailles. And so this is the oldest one. And it was built in the late 15th century. And the architect was inspired by the Loire castles in France. And he developed his own architectural style. It's late Gothic, but he came up with some unique uh, architectural solutions. Like you see these wonderful windows already. These are the so-called curtain windows. And uh, that allowed him to here you see it much better, that allowed him uh, to uh, not to build supporting arches like so many Gothic buildings have. And you see also the large staircase here. That's also a characteristic of his architecture. And that was then uh, kind of copied by a lot of architects who came after him. This building on the left, tell me more, more about it, please. The building on the left, uh, which you see hasn't been restored yet, is uh, a former storage building. And uh, there were ideas to turn it into a hotel, which unfortunately haven't materialized, uh, but uh, there's still hope that one day it uh, can also be included into the experience. Uh, while on this side, there's only this big dominant building. On the other side of the square, you find a large number of buildings, which include also restaurants. It includes a hotel and uh, uh, administration buildings for uh, the cathedral. And then tucked behind to the left is this corridor, this right here. So here's the storage building to the yeah, left. Yeah. And then we couldn't see as we came in this connection to uh, the palace. Yeah. And this is where this you is, were saying they started to yeah. do the manufacturing of the uh, porcelain. This uh, structure in the middle shows an important part of the history of the Albrechtsburg Meissen, because uh, when the European hard porcelain was invented in Dresden in 1708, they decided quickly to move production to the Albrechtsburg in Meissen, which uh, at that time was empty because uh, basically the capital had shifted to Dresden. And so they thought that was a safe place uh, to produce the porcelain and keep the formula a secret. So in this place stood the building where the kiln was. And uh, when in the 19th century, they moved to a new manufactory building, they basically knocked this building down because it was so badly damaged from being used as a kiln that it couldn't be restored. And in its place, they built this little structure in the neo-Gothic style, like as a connection between the two remaining buildings. Yeah, here we are going up one of the spiral staircases. That's not the great one, that's the smaller one. Uh, in the old days, in uh, castles and palaces, there were always stair towers. Only later they changed that, uh, and uh, indoor staircases became popular. Uh, but already here at this stage, you can see that the staircases had become a very representative part of the building. Uh, here, this is the the great staircase, and uh, you see how it ends on top here, and you see also these wonderful windows behind it, and keep talking, uh, keep... you see this is a quite a comfortable staircase and a rep very representative staircase as well. Isn't that real history? If you look at these uh, steps, you see that many people have walked these steps up and down. And you can see the imprint that they have left. And now we are leaving our imprint on them again. And uh, it would be interesting to know how this staircase will look like in 500 years. Yeah, looking up is fantastic. You see kind of the 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 uh, hole in the middle, kind of the uh, this, uh, section where everything is uh, tied up, kind of. And uh, uh, it makes for a very, very elegant uh, architecture that was really special at that time. Well, when you visit the Albrechtsburg Meissen, there are three floors that you can visit. This is the first one from an American perspective. It's the second floor. And here you see a very colorful small room. That is the chapel of the Albrechtsburg. So uh, in the 19th century, when the porcelain manufactory moved out, they restored the whole palace and decorated it beautifully uh, in the style of the 19th century in, let's say, in a neo-Gothic style. And that's how this room became very colorful. And I just want to say, when the when the factory moved out, uh, it moved from here 
to where we walk past the new factor. Exactly. Yeah, that's still the site today. It was kind of like a custom built now, if you want, factory that they moved into instead of using an, a palace that was never meant to be a production site. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the chapel is right next to one of the two big halls of the Alversburg. And here the architecture really shines. I mean, uh, I think there are not many places which have such elegant uh, Gothic architecture. And uh, they've made sure when they decorated this room with scenes from Saxon history, and you see also depictions of rulers from the family of Vettin, which ruled Saxony for 829 years, and their wife. They made very sure uh, not to take anything away from the beautiful architecture. Yeah, that's the second hall. That's actually the banquet hall. And this is very, very colorful. And uh, here again, you find scenes from Saxon history. And you also find statues in this case, uh, mostly of Saxon rulers. But uh, uh, the statue in the center at the back is actually the statue of the German king Henry I, who was the founder of Meissen. That's him holding uh, the sword. Uh, his royal sword and also a roll of paper, basically uh, declaring that here he is establishing the German rule of the region after he'd conquered this area. And you see in the background the uh, scenes from the history, you see a knight's tournament on the right side. And here you see the wedding scene, actually. It's an interesting wedding scene because it shows Albrecht or Albert, the name giver of the Albrechtsburg, marrying a princess from Bohemia. Okay, mm -hmm. going up to the next floor in the large staircase, we reach the section that uh, shows the porcelain history. And uh, it shows how uh, basically the European hard porcelain was invented. Uh, it was a long process that was only made possible because uh, our ruler at the time, Augustus the Strong, brought together a talented alchemist with the best scientist in the country and the mining experts, because Saxony got rich already in the 12th century through mining and had acquired a lot of knowledge. And together, they found the right formula how to make porcelain. First, it was the brown porcelain that you see here. Uh, and uh, shortly afterwards, they were also able to make white porcelain and then Next to it, you see already colorful porcelain. Then they found ways to also decorate it. So within a very short time, they had a very steep learning curve. And only a few years later, they were able to make porcelain, which was as good as uh, Asian porcelain, and uh, then uh, even better. And as I recall, they were looking, they were alchemists looking for gold, and they came up with this white gold instead. <laughs> Yes, uh, the story was that uh, this alchemist, his name was uh, he claimed that he couldn't make gold and he had also witnesses who claimed they had seen him make gold. Of course, we know gold can't be made, but Augustus the Strong found him interesting enough uh, to imprison him and basically put him to a new task, which was to make porcelain. Because Augustus said, uh, I have the malady de porcelain, the porcelain disease, because he bought every piece of porcelain from uh, from Asia that he could get his hands on. And he right. very much wanted to be able to make his own porcelain. And he, his hunch was proved right. Yeah, uh, uh, Bertia was really talented. And with the help of this great team that he had, they managed to uh, recreate the formula. Yeah, here you see an interesting model. Uh, you see the Albrechtsburg uh, uh, on the left side, and uh, you see two tall buildings next to it. And the middle one is the one that doesn't exist anymore. That's the kiln building. And next to it is the storage building that's still there. The half timbered structure uh, also doesn't exist anymore. So another model um, that shows uh, how uh, the Castle Hill looks like today. You see the gate and then basically so this the is, yard. This is where I walked in, right this way? Yes, absolutely. That is the former central entrance into the cathedral. And uh, to the left is the Albrechtsburg Palace mm -hmm. and the storage building here in the front on the left. Yeah, there are many rooms in the Albrechtsburg, and this is a special one. Why, and Actually, special, a very private chamber. <laughs> special because why? That's the toilet, oh, isn't it? 
Yes, it is. It's uh, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they preserved that, and uh, that was all already uh, quite a luxurious one, actually. Uh, but uh, because in the old days they had what uh, what you could call noses on on these old fortified castles where people would basically hang out their butts and uh, then the stuff would fall down and here they had already a system where they the stuff would be captured and then uh, basically be removed so that was more, much more hygienic and you were sitting on a fairly comfortable wooden construction here so how far a drop is that and where does it go um well, um, uh, since I told you that the Saxons uh, have always been talented miners, uh, digging into the rock was uh, uh, not very difficult. And you find uh, some of the deepest wells in Germany in castles in uh, Saxony. And uh, so this one goes all the way down and then the stuff is being transported uh, to the river. I mean, in the old days, everything went into the river. So that was uh, also not the best place to drink from or take a bath in. Uh, we've been in the building on the on the left, and now we're going to talk about the the center building and the way in. So, um, Wolfgang, let's let's start yeah. talking from here. I walked around to the yes. right. Go ahead. Yes. So now we're out of the Albrechtsburg Palace and we can walk around the former main entrance of the cathedral because the new entrance is now from the other end, and uh, we can enjoy the beautiful. A gothic architecture as we walk past it. So now we enter and this is what we see. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, the beautiful, very pure gothic interior of uh, Meissen Cathedral. Uh, you see it's fairly plain. Again, the architecture is the star. It was uh, built as a Catholic church, of course, uh, in the times before the Reformation. And uh, uh, so on the side, it had altars for saints, which were then removed when it became a Protestant church. Um, but otherwise, it still very much looks like when it was built in the Gothic times. Yeah, in the center of the middle row, you find this stone marked Benno. So who's Benno? Benno was a bishop of Meissen. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of tales about him. He's also supposed to have invented the wine growing in the region, or not invented, but started it. And uh, he was made a saint. When the Reformation had already started, the ruler of our Saxony at that time, George the Bearded, he wanted to remain Catholic. And in order to strengthen the Catholic Church, he had Benno declared a saint. But of course, when the Reformation hit after his death, his grave was destroyed. Interestingly enough, his bones were brought to Munich and Benno is now the uh, patron saint of Munich. And he had absolutely nothing to do with Munich. Yeah, here's the former main entrance. Uh, now it's, as you see, it looks like a chapel, uh, but this was open space and they decided to build this chapel around it. And that's actually uh, one of the burial sites of the royal family. So at some point, when, when they had this Gothic cathedral, they started burying uh, the Saxon rulers here. And you see there's an elevated grave in the middle. That's Frederick the belligerent's grave, because he was the one who was made an elector, becoming one of the most important rulers of Saxony, eligible to elect the German king or emperor. And... Uh, the title he got was Elector of Saxony, and then we changed our name from Meissen to Saxony because that would reflect his highest ranking title. And that's why he has an elevated status here. Also other members of the royal family buried here, later rulers, but also uh, wives. And uh, of course, only the important ones got beautiful decorated graves. There's a little, a little side chapel to this chapel and you see the gentleman kneeling on the left side that's George the Bearded and uh, he was the last ruler buried here in uh, uh, Meissen Cathedral and uh, so he had a chapel of his own and his brother who took over then introduced the Reformation in our Saxony as well and later this chapel was redecorated has a beautiful ceiling but that was in the 18th century when the Saxon rulers became Catholic again in order to become uh, kings of Poland. Here you see the beautiful stucco decoration. Now we are 
outside of this uh, small side chapel again, in the main chapel, you see uh, again this beautiful uh, Gothic architecture, and you see this wonderful portal on the right side. And that was the original main entrance into the cathedral. So that was on the outside of the building. And luckily, because they made it a burial site, this portal was preserved so well because it was now under a roof and has survived through all the centuries. So now we can go back into the main part of the church. And even though the church is plain, you will see it has a lot of uh, treasures. It has, for example, a large collection of paintings from the Kranach workshop. Here we see portraits of Martin Luther and Melanchthon, which also shows us it's a Protestant church today. And here we're already in the uh, area of the lay altar. And uh, this is also from the Kranach workshop. And in front of it, you see elements made from Meissen porcelain. Of course, the Meissen porcelain can be seen anywhere in Meissen. After all, uh, that's the town that gave it its name. So behind the layman's altar, you see the root screen that has disappeared in many churches, separating the room used by the lay people from the room used by the priests and the monks. L luckily, it's been preserved here. And you saw also a, a cross on the top that's from the previous structure. There was a Romanesque church here first, which was then replaced here by this Gothic structure. So now we're uh, going through the root screen and wh what we notice is all this beautiful stone masonry work. Uh, the guy who was at work here is the so-called master of Naumburg. Naumburg is a town which also has a cathedral, which is the UNESCO World Heritage Site. And uh, Naumburg was uh, for a long time also part of Saxony. So the same um, uh, person and his workshop worked here on the Meissen Cathedral, and his style is easily recognized. And uh, we see also statues here in the choir. And uh, uh, the statues on the left are uh, the statues of the German emperor and his wife, who gave the money for the building of the cathedral. And you, you can see Emperor Otto here uh, with a very puzzled look. And you see his wife smiling at him. And at that time, statues like this basically were very rare. So that's the individual touch of the master of Naumburg. Yeah, and you see also the altar in the choir. And behind this altar, you see uh, very valuable glass windows, which are very old. As you know, because of World War II, a lot of these historic glass windows were lost uh, because they were destroyed. And here they have been preserved and uh, are still gracing um, the choir. Yeah, when you go through the side door under the emperor and his wife, you come into more rooms which are now used as uh, museum rooms, which tell us about the history of Meissen Cathedral. Um, you can see here something that's always very popular. You can see an hourglass, because you would think that in the old days, the priests would get away with talking forever. Of course, church services took very long in that at that time. But nevertheless, they were supposed to keep their time. And if they didn't, uh, that didn't make them popular. And uh, um, so people could keep an eye on that. Where did I hear that some priests were actually paid by the word or by time and they actually tried to go longer because they'd get more money? Did I hear that correctly? I'm sure that happened too. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure the people were wishing that it wouldn't take so long. Right. Yeah, there are various rooms which deal with uh, different aspects of the history, uh, li like, for example, the building history of the cathedral, um, also the life at certain times. And uh, what they have in common is always this beautiful uh, Gothic ar architecture, which also manifests itself in all the, the vaulted ceilings. This is what we would call the lapidarium. Uh, so a place where you display fragments from the building, uh, which uh, were either lost uh, in the process or they were replaced. Uh, by copies because uh, they had deteriorated. Uh, for example, in the back on the left side, you see a gargoyle. So there are also gargoyles on the cathedral. Yeah, there's all these wonderful uh, small staircases that you have to climb up and down. So a little bit of an adventure. And uh, in the process, you see rooms that in the past you wouldn't have seen. Uh, since it was a Catholic church to begin with, it also had chapels, and this is one of them. And uh, this is today used as uh, 
a room for prayer. And uh, you can see they also put up uh, some of the uh, the burial stones of uh, rich people who could afford to be buried in the cathedral in the past. And then I was, as I was leaving, I went by the cloisters in the courtyard. Yes, it is indeed a cloister. It's a very small one, but a very beautiful one. And uh, that's where today also the entrance into the cathedral is from. And so then I made my way back to the train station and got to see more of Meissen itself. I would say it's downhill all the way here in Meissen, as always, when you come from the Castle Hill. And it's a, a very beautiful scenery with lots of historic houses. Uh, some of them actually look younger than they are because the houses were modernized in later centuries. But uh, you can safely assume that a lot of them go back a very, very long time. Uh, you have the cobblestone road and uh, Meissen has a, uh, really a charm of its own. And uh, uh, it's particularly charming in September when the wine festival takes place because Meissen is also the center of the, uh, the wine region. And I told you that Bishop Benno is supposed to be the one who had started the wine growing. So it's a tradition that goes back more than 850 years. Yeah, and here, uh, in case you wonder what the coat of arms of Meissen looked like, you can see it here. Uh, you can see the lion and you can see something that looks like a tower. So you can see that the original castle on the castle hill was of greatest importance. And it was the royal castle and later the royal palace. Yeah, now we basically uh, um, uh, further down and we can already see again the church in the distance, the church of Our Lady. Uh, but that would actually be a great place to take a rest because you have a wine store on the uh, left where you can also drink wine and there's also a wine tavern on the right. So how about that, Alan? That's great. Wolfgang, thank you so much uh, for opening my eyes to Saxony and being my host. And now uh, other travel advisors may want to do this too. And they certainly should be telling their clients about it. How can they get more information? How can they get involved? Uh, very easy. We, ha uh, we have a wonderful website called visitsaxony.com. And if you slash it at the end, like slash B2B, you get to the B2B section where you can get uh, all the information you require. The good news is also in uh, America, we have a representative uh, who you can contact as well. Uh, so he can supply you with answers, with information material, with whatever you need. And uh, so it's very easy. We uh, also run fam trips once in a while uh, because uh, I know that a lot of people don't know Saxony and uh, have to find out about it. And uh, you can also always contact me. I'm, I've been around for 24 years uh, and uh, I know the country well or the state that we are and uh, can help you as well. So don't tease us about uh, contacting you. What's your, uh, how do you want to be contacted? Well, very easily. If you look at our website, you have all the contact data. Uh, Unfortunately for me, and fortunately for you, I only have one phone. So you can reach me whenever you need to reach me. So that's all on the website at the address we gave. It's all on the website, yeah. Also, of course, my email and everything. Okay. Well, now, again, I want to thank you for hosting me and for teaching me. And as I said, opening my eyes truly to this, this wonderful area that's so rich with uh, history and, uh, and, and culture and food. Very true. We are, uh, after all, the number one cultural destination in Germany, and that for good reason. And uh, I'm not happy to tell you about it because I'm getting paid for it. I love the place, and uh, that's why I've been doing this job for 24 years. Well, it passion. shows. Well, it shows. So again, thank you. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report. <laughs>